Good afternoon from Atlantic Canada. We're here at Queen's Place Amera Centre, Liverpool, Nova Scotia. My name is Kyle Jans. Thank you for joining us. We're here at the 2021 Home Hardware Curling Pre-Trials Draw 12 Women's Action. Pleased to have a special guest here with us, the 2020 Canadian and World Junior Curling Champion, Jacques Gauthier. Jacques, hello. Hello, thanks for having me, Kyle. Pleased to have you here. Uh, have you've had a lot of experience of seeing you in the stands a lot, uh, a lot of a lot of family and and personal relations here that for a lot of teams that you're cheering on. We'll uh, we'll get into that soon, of course. But uh, let's first of all go over what our what our lineup here, and what exactly we're watching here. We are in draw 12 action, as I had mentioned. We have two teams that are tied at two and two in the standings. We have Team Holly Duncan from Woodstock Curling Club in Ontario up against Darcy Robertson of the Assiniboine Memorial Curling Club in Winnipeg. Both teams really needing a win here as we are getting closer to the playoffs. Teams playing a six game round robin against seven teams total in their, in their pool. Top three in each advance onto the playoffs. And for Darcy Robinson, this is second, Giten Gauthier, and this would be Jacques' sister. Yes, yeah, very good. <laughs> what, what are the odds for you know my first game of all time to get my sister to play? So it's happy to be here. I had to promise my mom that I wouldn't be too hard on her, so we'll see how that goes, but no promises. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this, this Robertson team, as I'm sure you do have some familiarity with them. Yeah, of course. I mean, they're... Uh, Definitely a good team, skipped by the uh, obviously very accomplished Darcy Robertson team, or Dar Darcy Robertson. They're very, very good drawing team, and I mean, they're uh, they're pretty aggressive in the most part. I mean, you see uh, Holly Duncan went top four to start the game, and Darcy Robertson elected to throw the corner guard, so she's not scared of a little action here in a must-win game. Um, I mean, both teams are looking for a big win here, because they both won their, or, sorry, lost their opener, won two straight, and then lost their last one. So. Both teams, I think, are going to be prepared to play really well here, and it should be a fun one. Absolutely. Duncan, no slouch herself. She represented Ontario at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts in 2018. Always one of those teams in the mix at the Ontario Scotties, continually getting into the semifinals, finals of that. Of course, a team named Rachel Holman also curls out of that province, so we do see her a lot, and this is a great opportunity here at these Home Hardware Curling Trials presented by New Holland just to get a, a look at some of these other teams that you don't necessarily get to see as often but are still strong contenders within their provinces and both of those teams fit that bill here. So we see a attempted double there. And now Duncan here without hammer looking to eliminate some stones. And definitely a neutral spot for both teams. Obviously Robertson controlling the front of the rings, but a good roll from here and that'll be taken Queen. away. So Queen. This is Megan Balsden, 2001 Canadian Juniors, represented Ontario as third, won bronze. Hitting that on the beak, so that one getting some extra curl there. See a little flop away here, try to take the corner guard maybe into play, I think. And this here is Laura Burtnick. Burtnick, of course, another uh, big name in, in the world of curling in Manitoba, along with the Gauthiers. <laughs> Laura, the, the daughter of Carrie Burtnick. Carrie uh, is also behind the bench for this team, uh, serving as coach. I think he'll uh, add a little bit to the timeouts. What do you say, Kyle? I would say so. I mean, when you have a, a resume like his with a handful of Briar championships, a world championship in 1995, Definitely knows a thing or two about curling. Has two daughters, uh, Laura and Rachel. Both go solid Dars, junior Dars, curlers Dars, that I recall Dars, from go, 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 right back now, in their right days. Go, go, Dars, go, go, go. That's a great shot. Yeah, it definitely worked out for them. Yeah. Don't think that was the desired result, but they'll <laughs> take that uh, every day of the week, I think. Go, Dars, go, Dars, go, Dars, go, Dars, go, 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 right back, right back. 
a pretty unconsequential double there, but absolutely happy with that. And Duncan here without Last Rock, absolutely making a play on this one in the top four. Yeah, it's a definitely a big shot. This is definitely a uh, end definer here. Strybosh and Bobby on the sweep, but that one over curls. And actually, that catches on. Yeah, very unlucky there with that over curl catching on that one of the back 12. They're on it early. Um, I mean, the, the beginning of the game like this, the center line is going to be a little softer than out in the wings because they haven't played out there because the draw of the buttons are all in the, that eight foot spot. So maybe got a little caught in the frost there, but uh, big chance for Robertson to sit three here with Last Rock in the first. Great shot for out there from Laura Burtnick and now setting one, two, and three. And quite open in the middle as well there, Jacques. Not to, not a lot to hide behind here. No, and even if you make the flop behind the corner, it's still still pretty high on this arena ice. You can get a lot of curls. So for Holly, I think she's trying to just make the roll, make Darcy make a difficult one and kind of see what happens. Might be able to, if she makes the roll steep enough, might be able to leave herself a double off that one that Laura just stuck as well. So definitely an opportunity. So this here is Holly Duncan's first. As mentioned, represented Ontario at the 2018 Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Two-time U Sports champion with Wilfrid Laurier University and also led Canada to a silver medal at the 2009 University Games. Gets the flop, but it looks like it's still exposed. Yeah, really, really good effort there from Holly. Not sure how much they can see, but they, they seem to think it's wide open, so. Yeah, and there you go. You can see it. Looks like it's all basically he exposed knows there. We rolling or no? Yeah, rolling. Throwing ten? Yeah. Okay. See here, there from Darcy. They're trying to roll underneath. Hi, right, Darcy. Right up. Go here. Yeah, yeah, mine went in practice here, so it'll go yeah. for you. And if that is the case, could be sitting up nicely for a big opening end of three. And as you said, right off the bat, playing aggressive and potentially could be paying off for the team here. Let's see what Darcy Robertson can do. Burn yeah. up. Clean. Oh, right up. Okay. Easy, easy. Whoa. Whoa. Clean, 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 clean. Let it go. Nice shot there from Darcy. Gets that nice roll in behind cover there too. Yeah, not too much of that can be seen there, though I'm sure with the way that the ice is curling, it's still exposed. You can actually see where the indication is yeah. on the broom, so it looks like there might be a lot there. Yeah, I think I might like this one. Okay, make it under. Board? Sure. Board control, whatever you like. Uh, I might like board. Okay. Do you think like there? Uh, yep. Okay. I like this call. Uh, with that, like we talked about, that guard's high enough that if you throw it good and manage it well, you can definitely make the roll under and make Darcy play something tough on her last. Trying it under. Plus, they just saw how Darcy's ran here, so they should be pretty close. Duncan would love an inside or an outside roll. By the guard. Hits it on the beak, so that should be a pretty good opportunity here for Darcy Robertson. 
Yeah, good effort there from, from Holly. I'm kind of surprised it didn't actually curl more past the guard, but uh, left the window open here a little bit for Darcy. Kind of way, Darcy. Just bomb. Okay. Uh, their skip just threw 11.5 in that spot just for reference. Okay, which is... It's a little bit down for bump, probably. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Um, but I think bump, I like the size for our bump, though. It's solid. Yeah, I think so, too. I like the communication there from the front end, letting that her know that uh, her yeah. weight was a little down from what she wanted to throw, so Darcy can have good information on where the broom is. Very important for front ends to always be aware of that of the the timing, the running of the ice, to be able to inform Skip with the skipper just that she can do her job best. So here it comes, Darcy Robertson, last rock of the first end. to curl. There's the clean call. Nice shot there from Darcy. So that's a big three-ender to kick this game off. We're starting off firing here. Darcy Robertson taking an early 3-0 lead against Holly Duncan here at the draw 12 of the 2021 Home Hardware Curling Pre-Trials. Been a great week of curling here so far, Jacques been here a lot watching of course your your sister but uh girlfriend curly burgess also in the mix here in the same pool as uh, as your sister as a matter of fact and they had, they had a head-to-head -head game how did you handle that well not well yeah <laughs> not well it was a bit of a wreck I, I started the game and i had people around me but they they all flocked away so i guess my nervous energy was pushing <laughs> pushing them away but that's okay it's all right uh it's a it's a win-win and a lose-lose i was just hoping that both teams played well um i mean at the end of the day, one team had to win it, one team had to lose it, and they're both still well in control of their own destiny. So that's all that really matters. Um, but yeah, I'm also here for on the men's side. I obviously have two cousins, Tyler Tardy and Jordan Tardy, that are in it as well. So I've uh, I I don't know this for a fact, but I think I might have might be the person that's been in the building the most besides the volunteers. So <laughs> most committed fan. Absolutely, I've seen you a lot here. Tardy having a really great start so far. Lost their first game last night, I believe that was, to, to Glenn Howard. Very much in the mix here. Yeah, it was a great battle last night against uh, against Howard. Some great shots made. Uh, I mean, it, it obviously shows that the uh, ice service is really well if the players are playing that great. So it's good to see. This is lead Tess Bobby. Tess, as well as uh, her teammate Rochelle Strybosch, who's playing second, they have played at this event, the pre-trials event in 2017, with Julie Tippin. They Wait. won. They won the B-side qualifier, so they advanced to the uh, Tim Hortons curling trials that were held in Ottawa that right, year. Let's have that experience. Know what it takes. Have a touch more. Yep. And that's huge in an event like this. Um, when you've played at the highest level there is to play at, the Olympic trials, it just lets you settle into this kind of event easier. You take the uh, take the experience of an event like that, and kind of run with it, as opposed to a. Besides Darcy, obviously these the three in front of her. Or this would have been one of their biggest events ever. So it's uh, it's definitely a battle of the experience. Three four. Three four. Let it curl. I think we're two at Darcy. We're two at it. Yep. Freeze it. Yep. Go. Hard. 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 Go deep. 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 She's another one who's had a lot of uh, pretty great experiences over the past year of curling, was one of the few that got to take part in the Calgary curling bubble. Uh, alternate for Team Einerson, so went on to win the gold medal and was also alternate for Team Canada that year. Imagine she picked up a thing or two from that team as well, right? That's Absolutely. Great atmosphere and a great, uh, great team to be a part of. Just be a sponge and pick up as much as you can and bring it back to your own squad. Especially sitting next to Heather Netto and throughout the entirety as well. Oh, yeah. she, she's a fountain of knowledge. Oh, yeah. Scotty's champion in her own right, obviously. Mm -hmm. So good start here for the Duncan team. After giving up a three in the first, got the corner set up. It's go never, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's never a bad thing when uh, you have the hammer and you have the team chasing towards the wing. It's, uh, it's always a good sign. Okay. 
That's Guten Goche. Coming up late on that attempt there, though, so this will allow Duncan a chance to play at those two rocks that are nestled up towards each other in the top eight, top 12. Yeah, definitely left the door open there here for the Duncan squad. Make a good hit here and force all the play to the to the two corners now. It's a little bit of dangerous danger for, for Robertson early here. Rochelle Strybosch. As I mentioned there, she had curled with Bobby at the 2017 pre-trials. She and Bobby also uh, won the 2015 Canadian College Athletic Association gold medal for Fanshawe College. She nice makes a great there. double there. Like all the way over. Ten. Ten. See that again. It's easy control weight too. I mean, those rocks were clustered together nicely and close enough that we're able to get both moving no problem. The nose hit for Goche. Yeah, they're hoping to get that over a little bit more. This leaves the off. Door open for Holly to get two stacked behind somewhat staggered corners here, so big opportunity here. This one, though, doesn't curl up enough and uh, sails out of the house here. So just like that, kind of uh, another opportunity for the Robertson team here to play a freeze. Out of the hand. Through, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's a tough break for the team here, and uh, seen a few of these weight control oh, issues right now at this like point. I couldn't and quite hear what the back front back. end had to say to Laura before she threw that because oh, Gitan played that same freeze came up light and uh, Laura played a different, a little bit of a different path. I thought it might have been sliding a little bit better. So I was wondering what they were saying, but I couldn't quite make it out. So big, big chance for Megan Balls in here to get another one tucked under there. Bobby and Strybosh trying to get that there. Just kisses the front. Okay, I kind of like bump here. It's pretty straight. Like the double? Okay, a lot of, sure. lot of half hey, shots nine. made here this end so oh, far. Like yeah, no team head. can seem to. They're struggling with the spot, it seems like. So Darcy made an initial reaction towards the double, but it looks like they've opted for the bumper weight hit and roll. There's a good shot from Pretty Warburg. good there. Not much else you can do. It still does look like Red is sitting shot stone. But I'm not, uh, I'm definitely not the guy to ask about that. I never want to make the call up here, <laughs> yeah. otherwise you look like an idiot after. Yeah, that's well, very hard to tell actually, looking at those two. So it looks like Holly's just gonna split the rings here. That's a good indication there. Yeah, I like this call. Get it on, get it on. Hard, hard, hard. 
Push, 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 push. Go to Walmart. Okay. Sorry, guys. Let's see. Yeah, great so. sweep there. Going pillar to post to get that top 12, but left it a little short. And uh, technical timeout there just as they adjust the rock here, which looks like Bobby's foot might have caught on the way over. Yeah, just slightly over there. Just they rearrange that though. This is the hit and roll the call here. It seems so. Yeah. I like a. I think Darcy's trying to play the big role, but uh, I mean, if you're if you have a over curl and you knows that I think Duncan's going to be happy trying to split the house again and just take her too. So. <laughs> I have to say it right away or else it, yeah, it's lost in the jungle. I would have called them earlier, but I just heard eight, and I was like, top eight or back eight? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, they were sweeping. So. Robertson, we had mentioned there, has uh, a lot of experience at the women's <laughs> game in Manitoba. If you're from Manitoba or follow the Provincial Scotties at all, you'll be very familiar with her. In the past nice. three years, she's was in the semifinals and two finals, yep. losing to the likes of Vaynerson, Jones, and Englot, all very big names. Ah, just in between. I think they actually did call the double, mm -hmm. and they're very, very close, just on the wrong side of the inch there. But yeah, it's not like they needed to remove that red rock either. They just needed to punch it back just a touch, and they yeah. You can see here, they just get over the face. See it gain speed too, because of the gear action on the yellow. If it can doesn't touch it, it might not even roll as far, but it spins off it. And now Holly can uh, go to school on her third's last. Uh, okay. Don't know the spot well, so they, they should be pretty close with this one. Good attempt there from Robertson, but a. Uh, Great attempt, or a great opportunity, rather, for Holly Duncan here. A little up. Hey, a lot of work done. Not curling. Really curling now. Starting to curl. Back eight's OK. 14. Waiting for that one to hit the brakes. It should in the back house here. Good. Thanks. Yeah, nice shot there. I think. I think they go for the roll. Let's go be shot if they roll big. Yeah. Ultimately, the goal there, if they leave it too high, it could set up another similar shot for, for Robertson. Yeah, so for her, she's happy. You know, she's going to try the roll to try to make Holly's deuce as tough as possible. But, you know, given the scoreboard, you're happy. You know, taking the deuce and moving on with the end. Didn't uh, didn't end up setting up the way they wanted to, so just cut your losses at this point. A well played end by uh, by Team Duncan. They had a really really strong setup to the end and look to capitalize here. The best way to to rebound after giving up a crooked number is getting one back yourself. So. Last shot for Darcy Robertson, looking to hit and roll over. It's getting nosed, so it should be a routine hit opportunity here for a shot for two. Yeah, and for Holly, she got to throw the same spot twice last end, so should be pretty comfortable for her here. You'd mentioned uh, cutting your losses and, and accepting the give up the deuce and it being okay, and it just reminded me of a comment that Felix Aslan made last, yesterday afternoon on one of our broadcasts. They had a Opportunity to score two off a difficult shot, but could have risked giving up three. So instead, just opting to please, take a s settle and be, have one stolen on them, and yes, taking their medicine is the way he, right. he yeah. prescribed it. No, 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 
It's never fun, but sometimes it is the smart play. Really nice throw there from Holly. Great bounce back from the team. No problem for Holly Duncan there. Thirds will take a look at it, but yeah, that is a score of two. So Holly Duncan back in it. Score of two, Darcy Robertson leading 3-2 after two ends of play here in what's been a very high scoring game so far. Yeah, no shortage of offense, but I mean, that's exciting. We have three other games here out on the uh, ice for draw 12. Keep you updated on those as we go through as well. Kerry Galusha of the Northwest Territories in Yellowknife leading 1-0 over Beth Peterson. Peterson about to throw her last year as an opportunity to draw for two. We have Penny Barker of Moose Jaw who has a 2-1 lead over Corinne Brown of Kamloops, British Columbia. And then Jacqueline Harrison with a 2-0 lead over Justin Murphy as well. Yeah, a lot of big games out there. A lot of, I don't think anyone's mathematically out. No. And no one's mathematically in, so the last few games here are going to be big for everybody. It is funny. I was taking a look at the standings this morning and being like, well, if this happens and this happens, but this happens, it's like, nope, there's too many scenarios yeah. out on the table right now for anything to be determined this early yeah. on. That's just the best way to get a headache is if you start thinking like that. <laughs> As a player, do you think about that a lot when you're in these situations? Yes and no. Um, for us, it's easier because we can figure out if we win what kind of situations it turns mm -hmm. out to be. But if it's too complicated and it's just win and you're in, then that's almost the easiest way. Certainly a lot to be said about a state of mind of just focusing on what you can control as exactly. well. Exactly. This is Karwacki at lead. As you mentioned she was uh, was alternate for Team Kerry Anderson as they won the Scotties and competed at the Worlds. Also has another alternate alternate appearance at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. That was in 2017 when uh, Michelle Englott was representing Manitoba and also made the finals that year. They uh, they were the runners up. So Karwacki has a good track record when it comes to her time behind the bench there at uh, at some Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. Two finals appearances, playing a couple of those games as well. Fortunate enough to know her a little bit just through uh, through the years. And yeah, she's very easy going. It's not a surprise that those teams elected to take her. And uh, I mean, for her too, it's a great opportunity to get some experience. And I mean, if you're going to be behind the bench in a Scotty's final, that's never a bad thing. Absolutely. Great, uh, yeah, great demeanor, quiet, but but yeah. passion for the game as well and de determination. Totally. And, and a great shooter, too. Mm -hmm. Good start to this end here, and she got an opportunity to make a flop under, um, get Team Robertson back, back on track after giving up that deuce. Hit attempt for Karwacki here. So a little bit of confusion there. Do you like control? They were uh, wondering whether they need to sweep it for straight or for curl, and that tends to happen. We were talking about it earlier. It just adds the adds to the game a little bit for the straight and the curl. Some teams call straight and curl, and some teams call name. It's just something that the Robertson team needs to figure out here early. Rochelle Strybosch here now. Looks like a double opportunity could be in play. Jams it a little tight though. Not the worst result. It rolled the uh, rolled the yellow to the center, so that one's accessible now for the Duncan team. And uh, Dar Darcy's forced to. Uh, Make a play at this red one. Skuten yeah. so playing second for this team. You had mentioned in her junior days off air that she's uh, played more back end, so this has been an uh, adjustment for her. Yeah, I mean, that's just kind of what happens with the women's game. Uh, she 
She actually played third for Zacharias the year before she aged out of juniors, who's also another team here uh, competing in this event. And uh, she first year out of juniors, she played with, uh, third for Laura, and they were approached by Darcy, and they figured, hey, that's a great opportunity for us. We can learn something from her. And I mean, obviously, Darcy's a very, very accomplished skip, so a lot of trust there. And uh, they took it, and, and she she's been really good, uh, really good at adjusting to that new role. I mean, it's tough for tough for lots of people to do that so same thing for Laura Burtnick she skipped for the longest time before moving back down to third she used to play third for her older sister Rachel back in her junior days seeing a lot of teams comprising of uh, an older player or someone with a, a lot of knowledge and good strategy look at the Simmons team for example right. with with the lot brothers and Kyle Deering there it, it gains so much knowledge from that learn patience, learn some additional strategy, learn how to react to all the good and the bad that can come on the ice. Right. It's nose hit from Gauthier here. An event like this also goes a long way in helping these lot of these players get some feel for arena ice and rocks and, and be able to play in a different environment than the weekend curling center or curling club bonds bill totally it's almost uh it's almost like a simulated nationals right you get to play with the cca rocks and the curling canada ice and it's a great opportunity to play teams that you might not have played before um you know uh, you get to play people from outside of your province and yeah it's uh, it's a great event uh, to have on arena ice and get the teams that do come out of this prepared because they'll be ready for the arena ice conditions uh, at the trials. Um, we can roll away. Okay, but yeah, easy, easy 10. So nice roll there from Balsden to change the turn here for Team Robertson. Sweepers on and gets the roll to the outside. Good result there, making again changing the turn. It's always nice when you make your opposition throw a different shot than they did on the first one. Try a new spot. down to this. Looked like a nice throw too and they were on off it out of her hand and I think it just ran a little straighter on them uh, than they thought. I was here this morning and I've only missed one draw <laughs> and uh, and I was watching the action on sheet C and that spot was seeming to run for both teams that mid eight to edge of eight spot. Uh, a little bit straighter. Chief Ice Tech Dave Merklinger has been dealing with a lot of humidity outside the building here. A lot of rain. Oh yeah, what a fantastic job the ice crew is doing. They, we had rain for almost 24 hours straight and it was it was heavy. Not yet, it, was it wasn't heavy. just a sprinkle. Yeah, yeah, and you couldn't tell by the way that the uh, the ice was holding up out here. So yeah, definitely a tip of the cap. Okay, good. Okay. Well, I guess, yeah. Burtnick making a nice hit and roll to the outside and just biting on the edge. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, we threw one out here, right? Yeah. And what did you, you threw, throw, right? Yeah, it, it came up. I was about here. Yeah. Maybe a little like that. Okay. It still came up. Okay, so a little more. So, like, yeah. So some good, convers yeah. a good conversation there about where to put the broom because going out wide out here early like this, you're not sure if it's going to run or if it's going to curl. Yeah, so like talking about what turn they want to play and uh, what kind of weight as well. So it looks like they're keeping the weight up just in case it does curl. Um, no harm done.
That looks to be no problem there. Nose hit. Yeah, it's a tricky little spot here for for Darcy and Team Robertson because they got to fall at the same way. And it looks like anywhere high in nose, you might roll out and leave the uh, Duncan team an opportunity to draw around the center. So definitely, definitely important that you stay the shooter and keep it on, keep it in the house here. Nine and a half out here. Okay. I think it'd be pretty straight. It hurt almost fell back there at the end, eh? Did it? Yeah, I did a little bit. Robertson uh, discussing the weight there with the front end on what to play here. Looking for a nose hit. Again, the benefit of being able to throw the second, and she just saw just saw how Holly's went uh, around there talking about that. Oh, snap! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I backed up. So that one does back up a little bit. Yeah. Caught them a little bit. You oh, could yeah, hear yeah. Gitan say before Darcy threw that she thought Holly's backed yeah, up a little I, bit, and I think so that's what caught them there. So no, definitely a door wide open for, for Duncan to put some pressure on here with a... Uh, with a really good draw. Okay, tough four. There are some Holly Duncan fans like in the stands. Nice you can uh, okay, see they have some cardboard cutouts of the heads of all the players there in the team logo. Nice to have an event where family and friends and fans can come out and support the teams that they're cheering on. So Duncan looking for a draw behind cover here. Looks like this is hanging a bit. They're going to need to curl it to get under the guard. Got to get it over a little bit more. Well, great weight from from Holly there. Yeah, Just didn't quite finish as much yeah, as they wanted and left It'll Darcy a piece little, here for the bank. Right yeah, just over a little bit more and that would have been a, in a good spot considering that, that center guard rock is in a pretty good spot to not too high so it would be a lot more difficult to draw around or come to but it's all said and done here. Blank opportunity for Darcy Robertson. Definitely still a tricky spot in the sheet if you, uh, if you're a little, it's touchy sometimes with the center line. If you're a little tight, it can curl, and if you're a little wide, it can run straight. So definitely important to make a good throw here. Clips one. Nice throw by Darcy there. That is a blank end by Darcy Robertson. So we'll head into the third end of play. Darcy Robertson will maintain the hammer. A little bit of a cat and mouse end there. The Duncan team had a couple chances at making the roll after making some shots to open it up and just never quite made it. And we're half a rock away from forcing there if, if Holly makes her last one but uh, both teams playing really really well early so To add to your point too about the fans, I mean, it just felt uh, it feels so much nicer to have people in the building. I mean, even my parents, they uh, they booked well ahead of time once my sister got the notification that they were in this event, and up until about a month ago, they weren't even sure if they were going to be able to be in the building. So they had all of their uh, accommodations planned out, and they had to start looking at maybe some tourist options for a second <laughs> second way of entertainment. But it's 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 great to have people in the building and. Great for the teams as well. 
Nova Scotia certainly isn't a bad place to to tour around. Uh, the drive from the the airport in Halifax to Liverpool here, beautiful. Only had a little bit of time to go around the town, but looking forward to maybe that Saturday morning. There will be no no curling as we prepare for the playoffs, and looking forward to taking a little walk down the Main Street Strip. There it looks like there's a ton of nice little shops uh, to be explored here. Very picturesque, right along the the coast here. Definitely a more compelling landscape than uh, my home province of Manitoba, that's for sure. <laughs> There's Garbage Hill in Winnipeg. Yes, yeah, yeah, nice. that's right. That's uh, top three, I think, biggest hills. When you look yeah. at Yelp.ca or whatever, tourist attractions is one of the first ones there. It's a must see. <laughs> Do you like the freeze? So Karawaki playing the, the draw around. I like the freeze, I think. Decision time for Duncan, just because their guard is so long on their leads first that uh, they could have thrown two centers, could have chased it or played the freeze. They've elected for the freeze. I like this call here. I think you, you see Holly play this just because even if they do make the hack weight hit and roll underneath, that guard is high enough that Robertson can chase it. Can you get around it? We can try, but I don't think so. I think it's like beside it. Okay, we're just, we're wide, so we're not going to be on it. So wide, and it looks like they're going to try and bring this back as far as they can. Looks like that spot ran again, that same mid to edge eight on the right side of the sheet. Seems to be running a lot straighter than what they're anticipating right now. Yeah, I would agree. Karwacki, also Whoa. Canadian Junior Bronze medalist, Whoa. won that with uh, Brianne Knapp or Brianne Meekin, uh, who's also here playing uh, lead for Sherry Anderson's team. That was in 2013 in Kamloops. Sorry, no, that was in 2011, rather, in Calgary. Also won a gold medal at the U Sports event that was in Kamloops that year in 2013. Also with uh, Brianne Meekin or Brianne Knapp. University of Manitoba Bison's program. It'll be an easier role, like, I think. Yeah, quite the accomplished uh, career Brianne Meekin mm -hmm. slash Naft has had. <laughs> Got her first opportunity in the, the bubble there at uh, representing Saskatchewan now. The, their team's off to, a, in this pool, and off to a great start as well. Good result there from Michelle Strybosch making the roll underneath. I do believe they are shot, so. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty close. Looks like it is indeed red though. And yeah, very nicely tucked away behind cover. But uh, perhaps Gitan can get at this one here. Weight control on shots like this is the most important thing because from the hack it doesn't look pretty, but if you have the right weight, it's pretty makeable. So trying to curl this in. Just <laughs> clipping onto the 12 foot there. That was a close one, but really well executed. <laughs> Oh, Aria, that's, that's definitely being on the right side of the inch there. <laughs> okay, you got it. Maybe a bit up. Please! Whoa! Get up! Whoa! Girl! So Strybosch now trying to do it herself. Will she stay? Yes, we got two right along the, the edge of the 12 there. You can hear them say that they have to hit it. It is shot rock and 
They haven't seen this spot. They saw the other side of the sheet last in, but. Robertson, though, maybe not being too upset that the play's out here all the way to the wings with Last Rock and a fairly open end so far. You know, if you see a nose hit here, it'd be a pretty much split as well as you can. Great weight. Yeah, really nice throw there, and Darcy's got the house. Those two are pretty much as far <laughs> away from each other as they can be, so a bit of work to try to get a double or... <laughs> So that's what we'll see Duncan ultimately try to achieve here right, right now is move that, get this hit, roll it in a little bit closer just to kind of set something up right. long term, looking yeah. a few shots down the road. Really a nice throw there. Not much else you could do with that. Just try to get it a little closer to that yellow, as well as change the spot up on Team Robertson. Always love seeing the uh, the corn brooms still in action, especially on the women's side of the game. I really I can only think of Kate Cameron at that at that upper level that that maintains it. But great to see two players here on this team that have that. They're calling a little hot out of the hand, so that might be in a little bit more weight than they are expecting. But um, definitely a sigh of relief for Duncan. Mm -hmm. Now they get the opportunity to go after this one and clear house again. Yeah, I'm trying to think of someone else that has a corn broom in the women's game. I, I know Robertson probably has the most in the women's game with two, because mm -hmm. Gaetan and Laura both have one. But For me, I mean, I'm a little bit biased, but I always like to see Tuckers in action as a fellow Tucker myself. Gets the hit and roll. <laughs> Megan Walter, I believe, is a, is a Tucker yep. as well, correct? Yep. Yeah, she's got a corn room. She's out here uh, as fifth for Beth Peterson. See if she gets to use that bad boy this uh, this week. <laughs> Had the uh, privilege of watching her at the 2019 Canadian Mixed Curling Championship, playing, uh, playing third on that team with Colin Kurz, and they went on to win nationals and win worlds. Yeah, she's a she's a tremendous talent. She, uh, I think she made her first junior provincial final when she was 14 or 15 years old. So. <laughs> and that that's saying something and coming in Manitoba. Yeah, yeah, pretty good field. And do we want to try normal? Yeah. Okay. Obviously, your brother Brett plays as well. We mm. lost uh, we lost our junior provincial final to him in 2020. So obviously, no slouch there either. You're probably the only person in the world who has lost a provincial final but then went on to win a national and a worlds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely fortunate there. But um, you know, I mean, we'll take. I'll take whatever I can get. The, the long storied history of Manitoba two in the yeah. uh, Canadian Juniors. For the record, those uh, th there were a few member associations that opted to not send a team to the Canadian Juniors that year. So, based on the previous year's rankings, some additional member associations or provinces got to send an additional team. So. Well, Jock did lose the, the Manitoba Provincial Championship, did get to come in as that second place team in the province. So the Duncan team would love a hit and roll here. Tough to, tough to generate a force or a steal just with that center guard mm -hmm. and being behind the team line. Probably almost over 20 feet of difference between the rock just over the hog line and the one in the house. So should be pretty much run them up and down here. And try to make Darcy's blank as tough as possible.
Darcy Robertson's first in the fourth end. And it's a bit firm. Just off the nose, gets a slight outside roll. Very much in play here. See your balls in and Duncan agreeing that they're going to try for a uh, roll in. I mean, even worst case scenario, I, I hate to beat this to death, but even just change the turn on Darcy. Mm -hmm. Just make it as tough as possible. Here comes Holly Duncan. Last shot for her in this fourth end. Wanting this to curl. Another nose hit and a similar style shot here for Darcy Robertson as she'll go for the blank. So we go from uh, Two ends, but started off pretty aggressively to a couple blank ends here. We might have jinxed it. We might have. That's all part of the game. All, all So important on how those first rocks are always set up, too. That's really going to dictate yeah. what kind of end they'll be playing. Totally. After a uh, bit more of an aggressive start, both teams opting to play a little bit more tentative. So here comes Darcy Robertson. Big sweep from both sweepers here. Kristen will finish this off. And she sticks around. So an unforced error there from, from Team Robertson. And Holly, Holly Duncan will get the hammer back for the cheap price of one. Not too bad. Four two lead now for Darcy Robertson if we, as we move in. Here at Queen's Place, the Mara Center, Liverpool, Nova Scotia. These two teams here, Team Holly Duncan and Darcy Robertson, tied it. Two wins, two losses. Each have one more game to play in the round robin after this. So a win will go a long way as the top three teams aim to make the playoffs. Both teams, as a matter of fact, playing uh, Suzanne Burt from Prince Edward Island. So that'll be a tough game as she's Tied for first place right now, three and one in the standings with Sherry Anderson. Yeah, both teams will have their hands full with uh, with Bert in their last game. They've looked very, very strong so far this week. <laughs> and I should know, I've been here every draw. <laughs> Resident expert here, Jacques Grotier. That's right. I can tell you what almost every seat feels like too. <laughs> you have a particular favorite? Uh, it depends on what sheet you're watching. Last night, I was taking in the action on E, and I had a couple picked out in the corners that were really nice because I could sit almost on ice level and see the angles really well. Watching, I think, family and friends, especially in those high-pressured, must-win games, I think that's more stressful than being on the ice. Oh, without a doubt, it's worse. Yeah, it's you can't control it at all. And when everybody's a uh, what do they call those a, a couch coach. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So everybody thinks that they know better, and I might be guilty of that a little bit myself. <laughs> So Duncan throw in the corner guard here. Same game on. It's time for a deuce. Okay, double corner maybe? Yeah, maybe. Sorry. We'll see Karwacki. She put her first right in the top four and is going to aim for a center guard here now. Let it work. Starting to curl now. 
We'd love for this to be tight to the house to avoid any type of space to come around. It doesn't quite get over to cover the whole stone, but that's definitely the uh, the pro like side miss. He'd rather cover that side than the other side and leave the uh, the roll to the corner. Mm -hmm. if you like, that's okay. Okay. So I think because that spot that uh, rock isn't entirely guarding the stone, Holly's decided to throw a second corner here and really really push the play in this end. Tess Bobby, she's competed at two Canadian Mixed Doubles events as well in 2014 and 2015, right when that event was in its infancy. Made the final in 2015 with uh, partner Bowie Abbas Mills. Won a silver medal. A nice setup from her this end to, to get play going. The Robertson team will try and protect the other side of that rock now. Good result there. Team Duncan forced to open up the middle here and try to bring those corners back into play. I think they're looking for a double here, but I mean a straight peel would also be okay just to remove that out of the way. Control. You'd like to see uh, Team Robertson replace it, so. The shooter is very important on a shot like this. Doesn't stick it around. So Darcy's happy where where that yellow one is, so she's opting to just replace that guard. Coming in with the other turn now with the clockwise rotation. Definitely running like it's a little warm. So yeah, like you mentioned, it might have been a different path and uh, a little bit of a different speed. And now this leaves the door open for all to get both of those in the in the forefoot and basically roll it wherever you want. Great chance for Strybosch here. Clean, clean, clean. Close. Yep. 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 Hard. You got it. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Close. Whoa. Little roll, little roll. That's the center. Makes a double and a nice little roll in. So a great, great result there from uh, Rochelle Strybosch. Er, sorry, Rochelle Strybosch. Gets that hit roll out. Now they're utilizing those corners that uh, the Duncan team has set up here. Yeah, so this will f force Holly to play to the corners, but that's I think that's all right with her. So 
like I said earlier, whenever you got the team without the hammer playing the corner guard game, it's uh, not a bad thing. Megan Balsden, the research associate, Soul Science Inc., also a PhD candidate at Western University. Stay on the inside. Do just that. Tough to tell who shot, but uh, six, looks like the red rock. That's a great oh, shot. Oh, oh, there you go. Yeah, what a great shot from Megan Balls in there. Locking that right on to <laughs> nicely yeah. behind cover. Yeah, that thing's not going anywhere anytime soon. So now uh, Laura Burtnick being forced to play the same kind of thing. Indicating that this, this one is heavy. She's a little heavier on the draw earlier in the game. I think she's played primarily hits so far this game. So um, it's tough. They, 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 usually the uh, it speeds up until maybe the third end, and then it stays at the same speed. So maybe a little bit of a lack of repetition for her for draws early in the game. So this will lead a great opportunity for Megan Balls to make another one around this center and really force Darcy to, to make a good one and not give up a couple here. I feel like that's one skill that curlers really need to learn is being able to be able to throw that that either that high hard weight or hit weight or your takeout or control, but then learning how to be able to bring it down right away to be able to settle in, take a breath, and, and still have that draw weight in your back pocket as well. Totally, totally. It's a huge talent. You see uh, the best killers in the world uh, most times when they have hammer in the last end, they'll throw a peel and then throw a draw of the forefoot to win the game. So when you're the opposing team, that's always the, always the goal. Like not much so Duncan's team has split the house here. Darcy being forced to play the draw around the center. If she makes the freeze, um, she's saying she's happy giving Holly the draw of the forefoot for two. Come off this a little too much though, or a little bit light, and uh, could be a great opportunity for Duncan as well on the other hand. Definitely a low margin of error on this shot. So very, very precise. You see Megan Paulson put that in practically a perfect spot where if uh, Darcy is a foot light, she might have the right line, but she won't even be second shot. So great, great rock placement there from Balsden and Team Duncan. Guard, no problem. Great shot. Solid. Well managed. <laughs> a little bit of tension coming into the rings there, but uh, no harm done. Really, really well managed. Yeah, small little bounce off there, but uh, in order to get rid of that, that red one's also getting spilled out of the house. So great shot there. Good communication from the team and the sweepers. Yeah, 
So you saw Holly and Megan talk about their options. They, they feel like this draw around the stagger is their best chance at ensuring a deuce. They also talked about throwing one into the wing, kind of full eight foot um, behind the T line to, to make the hit and roll tough as well, but ended up deciding on this one. Try and tuck a corner on the yellow. So it's like a four here. Okay. Line is pretty important because we don't want it to be open. Saw so Holly play a draw on this side of the sheet in the in the third end, so she should have a good feel for the speed. Big opportunity here for the team from Woodstock, Ontario. On it early. Yeah, I think they need it's to hold really this. Hide, 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 hide. Will they get by? Chapping off that stagger there. Okay, so if we hit this, it's going to jam, right? If we get that. And then they're going to be, is that going to be shot? One, so one, two. Why don't we just know if the stars give yeah, the draw? I think so. I think so. Ten? Yeah. Ten? Uh, ten, yeah. So they initially talked about playing that uh, that double. If you hit it right in the middle of the two uh, red and yellow stones, you get rid of, well, you make both reds move, yeah. but they're worried about all of the yellows and the right side of the screen there. So they've opted to play the nose hit and force her to the wide out turn draw for two. So uh, definitely no wrong call here. It's totally, totally preference. I like this call as well. It's going to be a, a new path that uh, the Duncan team will have to find here. No, I totally agree. It was well, very well thought out shot. I liked the, uh, the conversation between Darcy and Laura there. So here comes Darcy Robertson. Nose hit is the call. So might have over curled it a little bit. They probably left both turns, but Holly electing to play the out turn. I was here? Yeah. The intern does look a little bit ugly with the, where the corner guards are, might be interrupting the draw pass, so I think that's why you okay, see Holly play this turn. Yeah, that red rock in particular, right up by the New Holland logo there, that really cuts away at the path. It's a great shot, uh, great shot to show why Holly's playing this. Definitely a very high degree of difficulty here, but the speed should be similar. Holly Duncan looking for a score of two to tie the game here in the fifth end. Lots of line right now. Hey, not curling. Really running. Not curling. Really running right now. Kate, test his rock always if you can. Not a broom down. Needing yep, it to yep, die. Yep, 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 yep. Catch the back of the four. Yeah, I think oh, that's good. Oh, looks good. good. <laughs> wow. Very, very well managed by the brushers there. Swept perfectly. Just a bit of a whole hum draw the side four foot for two. Great shot there by Holly Duncan. So that takes us to the fifth end of this game between Holly Duncan and Darcy Robertson. Teams tied at four apiece. Thanks for joining us for this first half. Teams are going to take a break, so we'll take a break. We'll be back soon. Join us then.
Sweep! Sweep! Hurry! Hurry! Hard! Hurry! Hard! Hard! Hurry! Hard! 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 Yeah! We should really be curling. One might say I was born to overcome challenges. Two mice premature, in and out of the hospital, and a heart condition. My parents call me their miracle baby. As with all survivors, I searched for my place in this world, and I found it here. This pebbled ice is where I battle now, and at only 12, I am already a five-year veteran of this sport. I have my sights set on the Olympics. I will push hard to get there. The only size that matters in this sport is the size of your dreams. Before there was ice, there was our hallway at home. I was always the shy, quiet kid who loved math. But when I saw math come alive in the geometry of the game, I found my passion and my voice. It's a game of precision, a game of inches. It's the equation that now defines who I am.
back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kyle Jans, joined by Jacques Gauthier here at the 2021 Home Hardware Curling Pre-Trials, right here at Queen's Place Amera Center, Liverpool, Nova Scotia. That's been our home here for the past week as 14 men's and women's teams vie for the final two spots available at the 2021 Tim Hortons Curling Trials, which will take place in Saskatoon in a month's time. Olympic dreams on the line here. As we get into second half action, and what's been a great back and forth game so far between Holly Duncan of Woodstock, Ontario, curling under the Woodstock Curling Club, as well as Darcy Robertson from the Assiniboine Memorial Curling Club in Winnipeg. Yeah, they've been very well matched and evenly played so far through five, so hopefully the last five are as good as the first. Wanted to give a, a quick shout out here to our Canadian wheelchair curling team. They won both their games this uh, this evening, or I guess this this morning while you were sleeping as they're in Beijing right now and, and playing and competing for an Olymp or for a world championship gold medal. They qualified for the playoffs. They defeated Italy and Latvia today. So they are one of the final six teams to remain have qualified and mission accomplished in that, st in that step. Going on now for a podium finish. Big opportunity for that team as they head into a Paralympic game season as well. I've loved watching that team, getting to know some of the players, some of the most easygoing and dedicated individuals that I've had the pleasure of meeting. So we're cheering you on from home. Ten. Yep. A little bit. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. And of course, not only the pre-trials event here, but also the America Zone Challenge occurring yep. this uh, this weekend out in Leduc, Alberta. Team Botcher will be representing Canada, taking on Brazil and Mexico in a last chance qualifier or the only chance qualifier for these teams one team will get to move on in the america zone usa of course getting an automatic berth as the host country so all teams that are not qualified that through the host playoff for that spot and that is what team botcher is doing for the canadians so stay tuned to curling.ca as well as we'll have consistent updates of that event throughout So we've seen a bit of a, a back and forth uh, game here, Jacques. I'm curious to know what you think. What, what do you think the teams were discussing at the fifth end break, uh, particularly, I guess, with uh, with this back and forth affair? I think uh, both teams have uh, missed a couple shots that have just left the points uh, on the off the board for them or on the board for the other. I think in the first end. Um, Darcy Robertson's team played a really nice, really nice end, but uh, just one crucial miss from Team Duncan left them to sit three. And then, uh, I mean, the last end there wasn't too much actually missed. It was two great shots from Megan Balls and the set up the set up the deuce. So uh, both teams are playing really, really well, and it's just all about minimizing the errors or getting the most out of them. So there's a slight error there on a hit and roll out, which. Uh, allows Holly Duncan to take control over the end and wrap one around the center here and force play to the middle. Right so Rochelle Strybosch getting that opportunity here to take advantage of that Room. that error. Typically what you see after the fifth end break is that uh, it is a little straighter and a little quicker after the mop and uh, Team Duncan's first stone of the end didn't quite get to center line so it seems like it's being consistent there as well as that one not curling quite as much as they uh, were expecting either. So Darcy calling for the freeze now, accepting that the play is to the middle. Gauthier getting that. 
Yeah, a good shot there. Things like up here. Okay. Do you want to come this way? Um, she was involved in the uh, Calgary yeah. bubble, albeit in a, in a different role, working with the, the TSN production crew with, with Kathy and your mom there. Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, on the clock and never off the clock because she was rooming with my mother, I think, which, I mean, I love my mother, but uh, <laughs> that's a long time to be with her, so <laughs> God bless her for that. <laughs> done a lot of hard work there and that yeah being in that bubble for a long time can uh, can wear on you you had your own experience actually there being a uh, alternate for for the Tim Hortons Briar team in uh, in Manitoba there uh, with Jason Gunlickson how did you find that experience oh, it was great yeah I know um, they asked me or Jason phoned me around Christmas time and I thought he was kidding and <laughs> that's a cruel yeah. <laughs> cruel joke <laughs> We got there. It was a it was a great time. It was a great experience getting to to kind of be around the top curlers in the country and see you know Brad Jacobs, Kevin Cooey, all those guys live and in action. So it was basically a free front row seat, and uh, I mean they're great guys too. And I got a message earlier in the game from Adam Casey, a picture of them watching the game, and ready to critique every uh, every step of the way here of my commentating. So hopefully they're enjoying it back at their cabin, but. I'm sure Connor Karn Eggman's got his feet kicked up there on the on the couch, and he's probably t texting me right now about about how good of a job I'm doing. Hopefully, Absolutely. yeah. I recall you getting in for for a game or to play part of a game there. I, I saw you run back into yeah. the into the bleachers or back into the the undercarriage, basically of the arena. You get to go grab your broom and then sprint that out. I had never seen anyone run so quickly in <laughs> yeah. my life. Yeah. Oh yeah, they uh, they looked back at me and they told me I was going in and I almost fainted. So <laughs> yeah, I got to throw a couple there and I got to play actually a little bit against Brad Gushu too. So that was a little bit of fun. Laura Burtnick here. Good shot. A little bit heavy from uh, Holly Duncan. Uh, Third, Megan Ballston on her shot there left that open, and Laura Burtnick making no mistake. That's a great shot. And that's so important at this level, being able to take advantage of the mistakes that your opponents give you because it doesn't happen that often necessarily. So Exactly, exactly. you got to take them when you can get them. So a big shot here for, for Ballston trying to get to the nose of this and get an angle back on that yellow. Sweep hard. Oh, just clipping and kissing. It's just the margin of, a, of an air of an inch there, basically. Otherwise, that shot could have been pretty close. Yeah, totally. You give her, uh, you give her another inch, and she's by, and she's got a beauty there. Looked like a really good throw too. Just caught the center a little bit, and now Team Team Robertson's got a chance to go three behind a center. With last rock as well, this end. sure what happened to that when they were calling T-line all the way out of her hand. Um, maybe Darcy was saying it was coming off, so maybe that spot yeah. getting a little slower. Yeah, do like like as much as we can see. I guess it depends on what we're trying to do. Like, yeah. Might be nice to get rid of that eight. Yeah, I just, it makes 
So for Team Duncan here, they're looking like they're going to try to come in off their own. Um, looks like they want to play something off here into there and get that yellow off of the pin. Um, it looks a little bit tight up past the guard, so definitely have to pick the right weight. Certainly not a, a gimme shot here by any means, but a, a good opportunity to help limit some damage. Yeah, if you see this, if you see this made, Team no, Robertson might be full for a force to open it up a little bit, just because those two centers are staggered. But she can't really be. run that yeah, yellow that was just run. thrown by Laura Burner. Looks like they're throwing a bit of weight at it, based on where the broom is. Close, close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holly Duncan's first here of the sixth end. Oh, 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 oh. On off is always yeah, a good sign. Yeah, yeah. One, two. Well done. Very nice. Superb yeah. shot there from Holly Duncan to sit. Shot stone here in the sixth end on that in off. Definitely a big momentum swing here now. Yeah. Great shot. Just by that uh, that front guard there. Didn't really come into play. Not too much sweeping involved. Just a bit to maybe help encourage the curl a touch. And Robertson with no choice now but to open things up. So do you think that yellow could spin in there? Yeah, yeah. That you just heard Darcy say she wants to peel and try to spin it in. I think if she hits about, you know, about a half rock, it'll have enough action to kick into the house. So if it's in the house, I think Team Duncan will be forced to make a play on it, and then might see a easier shot for one. Yeah, it's a great it's shot there. <laughs> it's really nice. Very, very well executed and well called by Laura Burtnick there. Critical that it stopped for a totally. third shot there as well. So now it's decision time for, for Team Duncan. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> really well played by Darcy Robertson. All right, so we have a timeout now called by Holly Duncan. They're going to take a minute to figure this out. Coach uh, Barry Westman's going to make his way out. Yeah, but if it's tight enough. Westman is uh, the head coach of the Fanshawe College curling teams. He was the head coach where uh, Bobby and Strybosch won the college. Coached the Julie Tippin team as well at the trials in 2017. Like, it's either the roll or the double. No. If you want to get rid of 
rid of both, I think. Like the roll, she still has a double back, right? But for three, yeah. Okay. Well, no, if we get, get rid of it. It's for two. Right, it's for two, yeah. 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 My first thought was to I had to play the double as a roll. Okay. I mean, we only need to move it to here. Yeah. So you can okay. play like normal. Yeah. But I, feel I still like think, I, I don't want to be between two guys. Like no. I, I, I think I like the double. Okay. With normal? Yeah. Okay. The same as I just threw, or is that a little up? Uh, I like that weight, okay. whatever it was, yeah. You're like there? Yeah. Do you think it'll throw more? Yeah. So it looks like Holly has yeah. elected to play the double. They were looking at putting one maybe top 12 foot in front of that yellow uh, and guarding, but the line is very, very important. Could have given them an easier shot for three. Um, seems like Holly likes this shot more, so mm -hmm. I'm definitely a fan that they're playing the shot that the thrower liked, for sure. But very, very good conversation there. Um, Depending on where she hits it, it could be close that yellow or the red on the forefoot to touching that back red, but I think it goes over the top. So definitely a big shot here. So here comes Holly Duncan. Looking for a double attempt. Holding this line. Oof. Great effort. Close attempt there. Just needed it an inch higher. It looked like it curled a little bit at the end for them. So I leave the hope and hit for two here for Darcy. Definitely an up and down end. It looked like uh, Team Robertson was all in control and a great shot by Holly on her first and matched by Darcy on her next. And now a hit for two. Nose hit will do it here for Darcy Robertson. Hoping to get a two point score and a 6 4 lead. Here in the sixth end. Calling for the clean, looks good. Nice throw, very nice. Double the boot, why Double not? for fun, yeah, why not? <laughs> good shot from Darcy Robertson there for a score of two. Her team now takes a 6-4 lead against Holly Duncan here at the 2021 Home Hardware Curling Pre-Trials, Liverpool, Nova Scotia. Three other women's games going on here during draw 12 of action. We've got uh, Carrie Galusha of Yellow Knife with a 5-3 lead over Beth Peterson. Looks like they shoot uh, have a couple in play here as well, and Peterson could potentially be looking at maybe a shot for two, I can't tell, but we'll keep you updated on that. 4-4 four, four tie between Penny Barker of Moose Jaw and Corinne Brown of Kamloops. Barker trying against a pile <laughs> yeah, here, can, actually. You can see that. That's not the most fun shot in the world to yeah, throw. Yeah, you can see that on the left-hand side of the screen there. And then one more game out there. We've got uh, Jacqueline Harrison with a 7-4 lead over Justin Murphy as well. And Harrison sitting three and throwing over there. So with the lead, that's comfortable. Here on our feature game, 6-4 lead for Darcy Robertson. Both teams at 2-2. Two two. two games left to play, or one game left after this, rather, for them, each team to play. Would love to get to 4-2. Four 4-2 two. Four two seems like it'll be a very uh, comfy spot to be in when it comes to the top three teams qualifying for the playoffs. First and second teams will cross over in the format and play each other. Those winners advance to the A qualifier tri final. Winner gets the spot. Losers of those one, two games drop over to play the third place teams. Gotta go, I think. And then the winners of that bracket will go on to face the loser of the 
A side final and the B side trial spot for the last spot that's available. And uh, not very surprisingly, there's a field this talented and even that nobody in uh, this pool is undefeated. Mm -hmm. So just shows you the, uh, the level of uh, parity and competition out here. Here's Kristen Karwacki, lead for Teen Robertson. Throwing her first to the top four and going to be throwing a center line guard here. Similar setup to uh, the fifth end where. Very similar, yes. Where Duncan got her deuce. Right between the home hardware logos. Well, I get five please. bucks every time I say that. <laughs> It's a pretty good deal. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in the first end, or sorry, in the fifth end, you saw Duncan throw the corner and play the come around. And uh, this time the, ro the uh, guard was made perfect and she's still making this call. So this must be part of the, uh, the old playbook. Megan draw. Yeah, Megan draw. Looks pretty good coming in. It's yep. a little bit deeper. Top four. Okay. That's fine. Good pair there from Tess Bobby. Yeah, great. Just in front of the T line there. I think I also get five bucks every time I mention IKS Productions, IKS Live. They are the production crew who are here with us, been putting on all of these excellent broadcasts that everyone, not only across Canada, but across the world, have been enjoying. It's been a pleasure being part of this and, and being able to share this. We know that there's a big demand for people to watch curling and the ability of live streaming and YouTube. We're so happy to be able to bring you this professional looking uh, quality event. Yeah, it's awesome for uh, for the players as well as the sponsors of these teams That's for huge. them to get their exposure. It's, it's really, really great. See, Katan is uh, attempting to just lock this on. Pretty good shot, really good. Yeah, it bounced a little bit, but it looks like it uh, it kept the angle there, which is the most important thing, so it would be difficult to chase it. Brother will always be the harshest critic. You guys ever curled <laughs> together, like mixed or anything like that? Very briefly, yeah. <laughs> Very briefly, we uh, we played in a mixed a mixed doubles tournament back home, and I have uh, honesty is the best policy, and maybe I was a little bit too honest and too harsh <laughs> with her, so that mixed doubles team folded as soon as it formed. You sometimes see, you know, siblings or husband wife or partners who can work well together and do that because they can talk frankly to each other, mm. but for others it doesn't work. It's and totally dependent. I mean, look at uh, Brent Lang and Jen Jones. They're very, very good mixed doubles team, but I give them all the power in the world because <laughs> <laughs> there's no escaping your teammate if your teammate's your wife or your husband. Well, that's exactly it. Especially out on the ice, too, when there's you can't blame the sweepers. You can't blame anyone else. It's, it's on you. <laughs> So a bit of a misfire there from from Duncan, and this will leave pretty good opportunity for Gaetan and Team Robertson to get another one locked onto the center, and it'll be peel mode if this is made. Front, no problem. <laughs> it's a lot of yellow to be dealing with there, so. <laughs> Seeing a bit of a bailout here. It actually looks like they're going to play a run back. The only saving grace is that uh, the run double is right on the nose, and yes. if this is made, it's 
Advantage back to Duncan, so definitely a big shot here for uh, Strybosch. The only thing with having that many yellows in there is it's hard to miss all of them mm -hmm. if you run it back, right? So All the more impressive if you can miss <laughs> them all. Drybosh needing a yeah, nose woo. hit. Yeah, yeah. Looks close. Woo. Okay. Just clips it and rolls over there, but does eliminate that third shot in the top eight. Not a bad result. Looks like they got third shot out of that. Potentially second. Yeah, no, still third shot. Yeah, a really, really nice throw. I mean, just uh, hair on the... Uh, in it, you know, on the wrong side of the inch there, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. Is there anything here? No, not, not really. No. no. So they've opted for the same shot. So last end, Laura making a really good draw on her first. So expect her to be close as this is the same spot. Carwacky trying to get this over. That's a good spot, Laura. That's pretty good. It's a good spot. A little higher than what they were anticipating, I think. Yeah. But it still forces uh, Team Duncan to try to open it up here. Get the four foot open. Megan Ballston here. Looks Gonna, like the straight peel. I think they're trying the same kind of shot. Same kind of run here. Yeah! Oh, just geez. slightly off on both of those. Other, could have been a very different looking house. Totally. Yeah, just on the wrong side of the inch there, but I mean, a good sweep. A good sweep from the, uh, the front end there to get rid of one of those yellows. And now Darcy's got to replace that center guard, so. Yeah, both those runs just being so short of clipping off a second one for a run double. Uh, timeout here called by Darcy Robertson, though. Not surprising. I mean, even though they are sitting two in the forefoot, they're saying they don't love the guard as uh, they. Team Duncan does have those two in the eight foot on the side that are definitely threatening. If if they were to ever make that uh, yellow double in the middle, it's yeah. definitely advantage Duncan. Gary Burtnick making his way out to the ice. Won the Briar at 1981. Youngest skip to ever do that. So they originally were talking about the guard, and Carrie like came out and uh, said, if you're going to play the guard, you're going to have to miss on the left side of the stone, as we see it now. And it seemed like all in unison, they all turned on the guard, as they realized it's a little bit too hard to make, and they, those two in the house are a little bit too scary. So they've decided to play the corner freeze. As uh, Laura said, it neutralizes her end a little bit better than the guard anyway, so the best the best result they've determined is if they make the corner freeze, which I tend to agree with. 
great call here after the team took a moment to chat it over good use of the timeout both teams really having a good chat on both the timeouts called each team has one more during the second half of the game Burtnick here will be aiming for the corner freezes. This one starts to really curl over. So pretty good result there. It was a little heavy and a little tight and it ended up working out. But for Team Duncan, it's a little bit more open. Good read and line call by Darcy there to call them off, allow that just to curl up a bit and touch off that top yellow. Yeah, great audible. I love that audible is turned into a uh, curling term. <laughs> well, it used to be plan B, but sometimes you gotta play plan E and F and so on. So. So they've opted to play the uh, the hit and roll towards the one on the side there. They think that they will leave the double later on in the end. Right now it does look like you can make this double and score it through the hole, but you might touch your own red on the way by as well. So opting to play the hit and roll now, it's a patient call. And making the double is obviously very good too. Shade on the wrong side there. It looked like Megan might have been a little tight on both of those. And for Team Robertson, you're still not out of the woods here. You still have three reds sitting in the ring. So it'll be interesting to see what they play here. So top okay. eight, top twelve is the call in front of those two in the forefoot. Okay, Dars. Okay. Base top twelve here. Yeah. Okay. Speed's the same. Speed's the same. Okay. I think lighter's the miss, eh? Talking pro side miss as well. Yeah. You think it's better to be a guard than group those yeah. stones where just Holly can maybe center. even get rid of three right. of them. Yeah, just top center line. You don't want to yeah. give her that. Once the corner, like, guard the inside, you're good. Yeah. It's a good opportunity here for Darcy Robertson to put some pressure on Holly Duncan, who has hammer in this end. Yeah, when when you've been set up like this, you want to keep make sure that the pressure stays on because uh, you know any sort of miss here gives Duncan a sigh of relief and a chance to get back at an easy score. So this this one definitely needs to be made good. I like to wait early. Both sweepers on. They want to get this as far as they can. Got to get to that center line. It's that same spot that's been running for them all game is that mid eight foot spot. It was a little bit of a wider path than Laura just played on her last one on that freeze. And this uh, definitely leaves the door open. All of a sudden, Team Duncan makes a double here and they're first, third, fourth, and fifth. So many vast shifts of momentum so far. Totally. In this totally. game, in this end specifically. Yeah, it's definitely been a roller coaster ride. Nose hit ideal, or where would they like this shot rock to go? I'm trying to hear which way she wants to take this. 
if um, if you roll to the center, you give Darcy the freeze right back on top, and then it might be a tough draw for two. But if you roll underneath uh, towards the uh, towards the wing, if you roll this way, you might actually take away your own shot for a multiple because it'll jam on, the yellow would jam on the red there. So uh, it's totally up to the to the skipper what she thinks here. So here comes Holly Duncan. On it early. Oof. Oh. Some clips that one too thin. A little bit of a break there for, for Team Robertson. And now definitely an opportunity to apply a lot of pressure here for Holly Duncan's last. Interesting where they're putting the broom down right now. Just over halfway past the eight here. Gives yeah. me indication that it is running pretty straight. Seems gradually like they've been taking less and less this game when they're throwing the draw of the button, they're taking in just into the twelve foot, so just more than edge of eight foot. So straightening out a little bit as well as it does straighten out after the mop. Good coming in here. Big sweep from Gochi and Karwaki. Looks like they got a third shot, but um, yeah, sounds like they did. Left the left the hit for for Team Duncan. Big sweep there. I'd seen uh, Gitan as well have a huge sweep in one game last night as well to really carry a rock into that second shot position that they needed it or maybe shot, I don't recall, but a lot of work to have to learn how to sweep and maintain that, that energy for all those short bursts for little amount of time at a, each way. Yeah, I know that was a great sweep. I uh, She must have been watching me sweep all of these years. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely kidding. I am a liability on the brush at the moment, but... Opportunity for Duncan here to get one back. Room down by Bobby. By the guards. And sits at no problem. Great shot. Score of one for Holly Duncan here. Robertson maintains the lead, has a 6-5 lead, and will get the hammer in the eighth end. Not a bad force overall for this uh, Robertson team. Yeah, if you went into this end uh, telling the Robertson team that they were going to get a force out of it, I think they'd be happy. They could have uh, applied a little bit more pressure to make it a little bit tougher, but I mean, uh, at the end of the day, that's the goal. And for, for Team Duncan, they're definitely still in the game. So this is definitely a huge end coming up here. Um, you know, try to force or steal and, uh, and go from there. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised if I saw two centers here, but uh, it's definitely up to the team. Lots of teams throw one, lots of teams throw two. It's whatever they're comfortable with. Center line call here indeed for the Duncan team. Would certainly really love to be in a position here to either steal or, or force the Robertson team to one. Yeah, absolutely. That spot that uh, 
Duncan just threw his straight, but they have undercurled a lot of shots on their leads first throughout the game. So wondering if that rock might be a little bit straighter than the other ones. Because uh, it looked like, like Ollie gave the same ice that Darcy took on her last one. So it's definitely something to watch for. Uh, great shot there from, from Kristen. Karwaki shooting 93% this game. Her team, the Robertson team, 85% combined. Robertson at 89, Burtnick 82, and Goche at 77. Their opponents, uh, the Duncan team, 76% collectively in shooting efficiency. Holly Duncan, 89%. Ballston, 59 Strybosch at 75 and Tess Bobby at 82%. Always take those numbers with a grain of salt, of course. Oh, totally. That's, uh, you know, what? if you're talking about the stats on the sheet, I mean, maybe the last few ends, Megan Balson has been playing as well as she would have liked to, but she was definitely a big, big part in setting up the, the deuce they got in five. So it doesn't tell the whole story. It just tells some of it. But, yeah, both, both skips playing very, very well. It's always a good sign uh, when there's no steals on the board. It means both skips have their feet under them and they're they're playing with confidence. They're not. They're doing their job essentially. Yeah. yeah. So Bobby came around the other way for first shot, tucked it away in behind that center guard. Robertson happy with the angle and the stagger, so they're deciding to go around the whole pile, but it looks a little bit light. Not a bad result. Locks it on pretty nicely to that front one. Yeah, so here we're seeing uh, Team Duncan play a little bit more aggressive, coming around and leaving those yellows be for the time being. Great sweep, but uh, oh, just racks. Right in the middle. Yeah, if you touch the yellow, it's really good. Um, nine and a half. Okay. Just aim for the nose if we get the curl, that's good. So in the out or the out? Or a ten, maybe. I like I the out here. Okay, so ten. I, I really like, like the out here, I don't love the out. Well, I don't know. Can I throw in the end of the out, Dar? Oh. Oh, really? With that ice? We don't want to. So a bit of discussion about the ice and the weight here. It's that one basically on the nose, but I was that where exactly they wanted to hit it or wanted to bring it over a little bit so that there was some more action on those yellows into the red? Yeah, I think that's exactly what they want. I think they want to hit it a little bit lower, get those yellows a little bit, a little bit more. They were staggered, so they wanted to release the stagger, and I think they did that, so not a bad result. So Holly, Holly sees she might be in a little bit of trouble here, so making a play on those yellows now. Looks like she's just going for the nose, just to leave a center guard out in front. Exactly what she gets out of that. It was almost unfortunate to touch that yellow over, to touch, to be on top of that red, because now it goes on to it all the time. I 
I'd love to do that too. Okay, so, I like okay. that call. Just out or yeah, I guess we gotta play the I out. I think out with yeah. minimalize yeah, adamant. Ten? No, peel. You think we peel? Go. So I think the the real reason behind playing the shot is they want to keep the center open so that even if um, Team Duncan can get one in there, Darcy always has to draw the forfeit for one because the score in this end is huge. So they've elected to play the peel into those yellows, maybe jiggle that red into the open. Certainly goes a long way in maintaining and keeping the hammer in the even ends. So Goche looking to come off the red center guard into that pile. If they can curl it over enough. Oh, okay. Just fine. over the top. That's fine. That's fine. But as you said, though, it opens things up. Uh, yeah, I got a 90. So Duncan electing to use those so yellows as guards like to go around all of it. Or four or five. and throwing the draw here, really waiting for this one to curl. Needs to slow down. So now they'll try and take it back as far as they can. Kind of in between there, the yep. weight was good, but they had to wait to see if it was going to slow down. So needed to curl a little bit, but... being asked to throw the bumper weight hit here. It's definitely a tricky spot with softer weight. You need to be patient as this one works over. Both sweepers on. Right by a nose hit. I don't think they could have cut by those ones at the top yellow too much closer. <laughs> Definitely scared them at the top of the house. Great sweeping there to hold that. Definitely needed to get by there. But now this definitely presents an opportunity for uh, Megan Balson to throw the exact same shot she just threw and glue one on. It'd be a tough way to get to if, if she can make this. and saying that she added some to this. Sweeper seemed to like it. It's running again, though. Weight looks good. Yeah, sweeper switch there, activating some more curl. Touch short from what they would have liked. But still a pretty good result. For, for Team Robertson, they either have to run in the opposition stone or play a dig. So, uh, Gaitan must be worried about time because she's yelling that they got to make a call. So there you go, Laura. Laura's comfortable with this run back. We'll get to see some rocks flying here. Yeah, here comes the laser show. Good result there. Not not what they uh, were wanting, but very, very good throw. We got an angle on that red, and 
Now for Team Duncan, you got to find a way to get to that one on the pin. Yeah, pretty happy with the result there. Yeah, right where that red is there, it makes it almost impossible to really lock anything onto the yellow that's on the button. I guess they'll play the raise here. Yeah, I would guess uh, I would guess with that ice, that's what they're playing, which I like. I like that call. So back eight kind of wait. They, um, they should know the speed here and how it moves, so I would expect her to be pretty close on this one. Holly Duncan's first of this end. Sweeping this to get by. Good. But over curls. Her line was perfect. She just didn't quite have the weight. Looked to be a little down, even just off of what yeah. impact it made on that yellow yeah. rock there. It looks like to me that... Uh, these two should drag onto here if you could hit the center line side of that red. So Darcy's got to be careful with that. She can't really make a play at those reds. So they're electing for the draw. heard a few comments about the the time here so they're in the eighth end and so I'm curious to know well they had a they had oh there you go you got uh, plenty of time too much <laughs> they had a, uh, an, a battle with Joe brothers and they had I believe four minutes uh, left to play two or three ends and in the they started the last end team Robertson had a, a minute 52 to play with uh, one timeout, and Team Brothers had just over two minutes. So that one was a very exciting finish. Very quick end. So I guess they're having flashbacks of, uh, of that game. Suck this in behind those reds. It's a pretty good result. I don't know what else he could have really done. I mean, it yeah. could have curled a little bit more, but a really, really good result. So Duncan opting to play at it. Not the easiest of shots here to make either. I think the thought is that even if she knows it, it's really tough for Darcy to get another one in there for two. She'd probably have to play something on the other side and tap that yellow at the top of the 12 foot. So. Definitely very, very difficult, uh, but possible to get the inside roll. This is Holly Duncan's last shot, eighth end. Easy. Yep. Yes. Playing at whoa, whoa. the Robertson stone Keep that going. she just threw. Needing it over. Pretty, pretty good result there. It's pretty straight here, eh? Yeah, nose hit doesn't look like it would do anything in regards to getting second shot. So, switch the turn on Darcy, make her play a different path, and I mean, one of the hardest shots to play is a t angle tap, so. Need full four. This one is tap? Yeah, this one's tap. Because I 
hair more than dark, I think. Yeah, hair more. Hair more, yeah. Let's make it dark. So, go. per Gaetana, hair more will do it, whatever that means. <laughs> Darcy Robertson here. Last rock of the eighth end. Angle tap for two. Get line. Get line. Hard on it early. It's like they're on the guard. It's like so. they needed more than a hair. Yeah, well, they had. It looked like they had the weight. It just didn't look like they gave themselves an abundance of ice on that one. No, it was okay. The, what ha what tends to happen is if you don't play a spot for a while, it can frost up and curl more. And uh, every rock this end was played on that same side that Holly played her last hit on. So, I think they might have got caught with a little bit more curl. I think if she had that weight with the ice on the other side, she'd been fine. But. Um, I mean, all in all, the the score was the important thing there to keep uh, keep control of the game. So, for for Duncan, they're going to need a uh, a deuce and a steal or or go aggressive for three here. So, Robertson scores one in the eighth end of play, takes a seven-five lead against Holly Duncan. Looking around the rings, Beth Peterson now leading Carrie Galusha eight to five. Had seen a uh, Penny Barker make a Beautiful raise, angle raise takeout for three in the seventh end. Now tied with Corinne Brown, seven apiece. They're in Skips Rocks of the eighth, so another score will be coming up there soon. We have one final to report as well. Jacqueline Harrison defeats Justin Murphy, 10 to five. Yeah, that team looks like they're playing really, really well is uh, Jacqueline Harrison. Beating Corinne Brown yesterday and it was mm -hmm. a pretty, pretty good battle. Yeah, Harrison improves to three and one in her pool now with games against Galusha and Peterson coming up. Two games that you have to think that they'll definitely be in contention for as they make a strong push to uh, earning one of those two final Tim Hortons curling trial spots that are available. This is uh, one of my favorite situations to watch as a as a spectator is down two with in nine because you got to go hard for it or what lots of the top level men's teams do and women's teams do is they even like the blank you know because if you get a three here if you're team Duncan team Robertson has the chance to respond if you blank this end and get a three you win the game so it's really interesting always to see what people do here if. If Team Duncan wanted to do that, they would have hit the rock that uh, Kristen and Karwacki threw top four foot, but they're obviously electing to put their marbles in in the ninth. Not what Karwacki was hoping for there. Yeah, I left that team Duncan off the hook a little bit, not having those all in a line. So you see, if you see this one get tucked underneath, Darcy might be forced to chase it or throw a center with one rock out of position. It's Tess Bobby making the play on this. She's a senior claims assistant with Allstate Canada. And maybe just get, <laughs> they just gets the just bite. Just on. Got too much of it. <laughs> oh, good, good pair from, from Tess Bobby there to set up the end. It's astonishing how much that rock comes to score. Yeah, I guess so. 
So that's back to back on them that have run like that, Kyle. I guess that side is getting really, really straight. Again, that's the same side last end that was played the whole end. Mm -hmm. So could hear Carwacki even Robertson even discussing at the end there. Yeah, so less ice then. Yeah. So they're they're yeah. figuring it out yeah. now. Originally, Darcy thought that Kristen's second one, she said she thought she threw a little bit more in out, which means it would just run a little bit straighter, but it might also be the spot there, too. So Duncan making a play on these now. Obviously, the goal to somehow include the uh, the red in a score. Bring play to the corner. Drybosch, general manager of the Woodstock Meadows Golf Center. Oh, great shot. Beautiful Gets all three of those shot. going. Yeah, great shot there from Strybosch to get those all get those all moving and now even if you see uh Gaetan knows this one, you might even see Duncan ignore it and just wrap around their corner. Ten doesn't quite get the nose. Would love for that to move over. I think that just bit. Now who is second <laughs> shot? <laughs> That's the second one that Gitan's got to spin in there. So always the uh, bonus of playing on this kind of ice with these kind of rocks. You always get that that nice curl in. Sometimes it's pretty aggressive. It can be unexpected oh, too. Oh yeah. <laughs> So as predicted, Team Duncan ignoring it, just drawing around. Both teams getting caught up on the ice a little bit, not getting as much finish as they're expecting. Are they even that tight on time, or are they just Dar overreacting? Darcy doesn't seem as, as concerned <laughs> about the time. Um, Five just, minutes with a timeout, that's... Yeah. I think she's used to this. I think maybe younger players who have aren't used to playing that close to the time, maybe not as used to it, but I'm not sure. I guess, how, have you found yourself in situations like that where the time is of an issue and does it, does it distract you at all, I guess, from, from the general gate game plan? No, it, you know what? It almost makes the game simpler. That's what I was saying when there's the Brothers Robertson game there, they're there. Down to the wire. Me, we, our team, my my men's team and I were in uh, the direct entry event to get mm -hmm. into this. In our first game we were playing Sean Meacham and we had three minutes, both teams had three minutes to play three ends. And so <laughs> I think it ended up being where we were down two with in 10 and uh, Sean had I think 10 seconds to throw his last rock and he couldn't eat, like they had used their time on his first one so he had to stay down there and then I had maybe 30 seconds so <laughs> a bit of an electric finish but you, it just takes all the second guessing out of the game you just kind of got to call and throw you got to pick one and throw it adds to the excitement of the game and I, I know a lot of players and a lot of teams have a lot of opinions on the, the new trial rules that the World Curling Federation are putting on, specifically the, the thinking time per end. And in a thinking time per end format is certainly putting teams in that situation a lot more. Getting like 95 when you're broad. Well, when the ice is as good as it tends to be at these kinds of events, and the players are as good as they tend to be, it almost turns into chess a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, hate the, I hate the reference to chess on ice, but if you give these teams all day to think about strategy, then the uh, it wouldn't be as fun to watch. Yeah. So. Certainly a delicate balance that an appropriate solution needs to be found too. Right. Close. Close. Back eight. Close. 
So coming around here again, the line looks pretty good. Just has to sit. Yeah, sit shot, back 12, but uh, lots of opportunity here for Robertson to play a freeze. Yeah, just look at the ice that they're taking for that. Yeah. <laughs> Balls in second one, it caught the center line early. They're definitely getting the finish across the center line. It just takes a little bit longer to get there. Yeah, I think so. Let's make it, Dart. Let's go. Sweeper's on it early. Line's okay. Line's okay. Go if you need to. Yeah. Hard line now. Hard line now. Hard, guys. Hard line. Get this by. Hard to it, Kristen. You got it. Keep going. Hard this year. Hard, hard, hard. Go, 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 go. What a scrub. Wow. What a great sweep by the front end there. Pillar to post for Gauthier and Karwacki. They, they made that shot there. They were practically had their brooms down before Darcy even let go of the rock. The question now is how much can Holly see of that rock? I think with board weight, they should be able to get at this. Yeah, they played this identical shot in the first end and it uh, it curled it curled on them so they should know the line it's the exact same spot so here we are in the ninth end and you're calling back to the first yeah that, that, that's a skips memory right there if I'm, I'm in ever... the game I'm focused <laughs> Duncan now, her yeah. first here in the ninth end. Hard on that. By one. By the second. <laughs> that went through it. Wow. What a great scrub again. Fortunately, it left it wide open for, for Team Robertson, but what a great effort to get that by. But it's Definitely not the easiest uh, yeah, okay. board waiter in the world because they got two of those yellows that they can they can jam on in the wing. So need a little flop in towards the corner. Yeah, do not want to be outside. Nose at minimum for sure. Yeah. And you can see it there. Anything uh, anything thinner than two thirds on the center line side would probably result in a jam. So. Weight control again, really important on this shot. Yep. Yeah, well thrown, well swept. So Robertson will be thrilled with this end here. Yeah, this would definitely be their desired result going into 10. And Holly Duncan opting to play the board weight hit here, or light hit weight rather than opting for the draw. Same shot, she just threw it. Yeah, 
light or anything goes wrong with the draw, you're looking at a lot of yellow right around the, the edge of those rings as well. Yeah, totally. The uh, degree of difficulty on the shot, considering she just played, is definitely a little bit less than the draw. So, obviously very comfortable with this. Looks like a really nice throw. And they'll clean it in there. No problem for Holly Duncan. Takes one in the ninth end. However, she does trail Darcy Robertson 7-6 as we head into the 10th end. Robertson gets hammer back. A couple of other solid games going on around us here. Give you one last update here. Peterson and Galusha tied at eight. Galusha scoring three in the ninth end to tie it up so peterson has hammer now that's an absolute battle <laughs> yeah it went from uh peterson i think down two without and cracked a steal of three and seven and a yep. steal and eight so definitely a bit of a roller coaster over there and then one sheet over penny barker and corinne brown also duking it out right now barker uh Scoring three on a really nice shot. Well, another steal of three, actually. Corinne Brown in the sixth. Barker responds with three of their own, then a steal of one in the eighth for the lead. Eight seven right now. Corinne Brown just wrapping up. I think they're in Skip's Rocks, and Brown potentially looking like she'll be forced. So that's a good situation for Barker to be in. Yeah, especially after uh, giving up that steal of three to bounce back with a couple good ends. Always huge. And then of course over here on our feature sheet, Holly Duncan, Darcy Robertson, been having a good back and forth game so far. Ladder ends here though favor Robertson as she now has hammer in the last end with a one point lead. So definitely a um, preference call on here. You see Holly throw the one on the center, and Darcy could play the tick, but they've opted to play around it. Some teams are more comfortable playing that tick when they're tied with hammer, feeling like they have to make the tick, but when they're up, um, they do like this call. So, I mean, it's totally personal preference and really well made by Kristen. Yeah, nothing, nothing wrong with playing that when you can know your lead's going to be able to put that in really reliably, eh? Yeah, totally. When you're, It's totally up to your how your lead's playing. And Kristen's had her four foot weight the whole game. She's played really, really well. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, Darcy's very comfortable with her throwing it in the four foot and made it good. So, proved her right. So the two centers go up. Nice shots by Tess Bobby. Nice high guard who's uh, in here yesterday and discussing the importance and how difficult uh, a guard can actually be when you need it to be placed just right, especially when the ice is this active. And not only that, but playing a high guard like that because you have to get the weight just right where it's just over. And if you're a little bit under, the, the results can actually be very detrimental. Might be a weird pro, but it's one of my favorite parts about skipping is I'd never have to throw that shot. <laughs> It's as nice as you, as nice as you can ho hope for in the in the tenth from Kristen Karwaki. There, two beauties. Good chance to set our team up for success here. So trying to get a red one in there to try to jiggle them up. You can almost guarantee that Darcy will be running up there to to peel one of those reds, so bring play into the house for the end of the end. Yeah, no choice for Duncan at this point. They need something in there situated. Not a bad result. It's definitely usable there.
So sometimes you would see them peel the tight guard, but I think uh, Team Robertson noticed that if they peel that tight one, they might get into trouble with the one that uh, Strybosch just threw. So opting just to get rid of the one guard and be happy with it. A little differently than called there. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't quite get the, the curl up, almost a nose or a little bit of a rollout. So it does does roll to the wing at least there and they almost a little bit fortunate because it takes away some of the access on the red rock mm -hmm. there. So worked out in a way. Yeah. I think we can So I'm going to play at these in the in the rings here and try to scatter them a little bit. Yeah, that really slowed down. I certainly perhaps changing a little bit here. Not too bad of a result uh, for Team Duncan as it is, though. If they keep replacing the guards at the end of the end, Holly might have that nose double and. Darcy might actually be tough to uh, score when she might have to play a double to win the game. So, you know, given how good Darcy is at drawing, if you're Team Duncan, you got to be thinking about what you want to leave her. And considering how good of a drawer she is, the, the hit might be what they're thinking of leaving her. So, not a bad situation for, for Team Duncan if you're looking to steal. So opting to bump it again. Hoping that this one won't die. Just tap it right on the nose, create a pocket, back forefoot, and give Holly something to freeze to on her shots. So it's a little warm though. Megan Ballston's first of this 10th end. Trying to get it over. Right out there. Go, go, go. Touch it. Just kind of ricochet to the back of the house. Definitely decision time for, for Team Robertson. I just don't ever want to touch that red. No. Yeah. We can peel the red or we can come right in. Let's decide, guys. I don't mind coming here. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think that's it. Did I come in there? I don't hate it. I like the I out, though. I think the peel on the tight one's too sketchy. Okay, I like the out, though. Okay, so they're coming in. Okay, let's make sure we're there, Laura. Yeah. 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 Team Robertson definitely playing with urgency at the moment. But uh, sign that the freeze is the safer call than trying to run one of Duncan's. Using their own as collateral would be too dangerous. Needing this to curl, needing this to die. Same spot that Rochelle Strybosch has came off there, and it looked like it reacted similarly. So the shooter on this shot is more, almost more important than anything else that happens. Megan Ballston's last year, needing this one to stick around. Has to get off that center line. So they roll it away and it's, ooh, spins back a little bit. It's virtu virtually the same situation as Laura's first, but with the one on the side of the forefoot. Yeah, no. I like the open one all day, no? So we get. Wonder if they want a timeout. <laughs> so they're calling for the timeout here, Darcy Robertson's team. Kerry Burtnick will make his way out again as they take a second just to take a breath. I think they really needed to reset themselves here. Make that and roll away. She knows here she's got that double. I know. Yeah, that's 
Okay. Are you like nosing that? Rolling out with that? That's yeah, what I'll I get to. Because okay. I was thinking if we stopped it. They got the Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's start over then. I think I like throwing ten at it though. Okay. Well, you're getting rid of it, Laura. No, I know, but I've been throwing mine too wide. Okay. Yeah. You like that? I don't want to throw. Whatever, whatever you're gonna make. Whatever you're gonna make. Okay. Let's go nine five. So it was tough to hear him, but it seems like Coach Carey advised on the hit, which seemed to be their first uh, inclination anyway, so the whole team seems to be on board with this call. Yeah. Just pretend you're throwing a 10, you're throwing a 9-5. Just pretend you're... What does that even mean? <laughs> Every team has its own... Uh... <laughs> Just pretend you're throwing a 10 and it's a 9-5. Whatever works. Here comes Laura Burtnick, her last of this 10th end. Playing the hit. Sweepers down. Holding it. Katan working on this one. That's a good result. It's a good result there. It nullifies those two in the 12 foot. So Duncan's definitely got to keep her shooter in here um, on these two yellows. And they opt to take a timeout as well, so Barry Westman, the coach, will make his way out here as they discuss the situation. Just slightly less forceful in their timeout call than Team Robertson <laughs> was. So it looks like they're playing kind of a bump bump type situation and wanting to push that back yellow more towards the back forefoot. Yeah, I like the conversation there. They were saying if they put the yellow in the back forefoot, they can use the one that Laura just threw and play some sort of in off on it. If you see Holly leave her shooter there, it's going to be tough for Darcy to get it out given all the jam possibilities here. So. I definitely, definitely really like this call and like the weight that they're throwing at it. It's close. Test Bobby is sweeping this over. Oh. Yeah, that's I think that's, that's a great result. Drew it up, yeah. yeah. Robertson looking for a draw yeah, here. Yeah. That's a lot of ice. I, I think that's, we want to get to center. No, we want to get to side four. Yeah. So, uh, no, center. Center? Yeah, yeah I think that's a lot. Front end not agreeing with the broom. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, let's make it. Love to get it just on that center line here, Darcy, yeah. say four foot and cut off oh, that, yes, that path to any type of, of freeze or draw in there. You like to keep it uh, usable as well. You don't want to hook it and if uh, you see Holly Duncan make that in off, you'd like to still be able to raise it to potentially win the game. So the Darcy, we got 30 seconds. Oh, sorry. 
Maybe they are tied on time. What did she say? Excuse then? me. We have 30 seconds. So oh. I guess I guess these two have to get off pretty quickly. And yes. they're out of timeouts. So I withdraw my uh, my judgment about their <laughs> call for timeouts. Need it to go. Not so, exactly what the skip wants to hear, just no. as they're pushing out too. It's a tough situation when you're up against the clock like that. Especially because they left the door open for, for Holly Duncan here, staggering those top ones. If you see if you see Holly put one right on the home hardware logo. Five is that, bucks is that for five you. bucks for five me bucks or for you? you? Okay, yeah, okay, you, well, you get that. Home hardware logo. Uh, then uh, you might have to see Darcy actually come off that one in the wing if she wants to score. So. Big shot here and turned into a very intense tenth end here. Holly Duncan needs to be shot. Keepers are backed off it a little bit. And that will be it. Darcy Robertson does not need to throw her last rock. Ice conditions may be playing a focus on that one there. And what a wild finish. Yeah, both teams playing against them, the other team and the clock as well. And I think both skips had to rush their last one. And that's definitely not what we want to, what you have to do when you want to make a really, really good one. So definitely a very well played game by both teams. Big win for Darcy Robertson. She improves to three and two here at the Home Hardware Canadian Curling Pre-Trials. Join us once again here at Curling Canada's YouTube page at 4 p.m. We have a Battle of Alberta. Team Karsten Sturme up against Team Jeremy Hardy. It's going to be a great one. Until then, on behalf of Jacques Gauthier, I'm Kyle Jams. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again soon.